Welcome to Spreadsheet Geek. In this video, we're going to take a look at the game of Monopoly. To be a winner in this game, you need a combination of luck and skill. We'll point out the best properties to own and develop with houses and hotels. What makes these particular properties so desirable stems from the random probability built into the game. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. Let's talk about these guys first. We roll these to advance our game piece in the game of Monopoly. As individuals, each die has six sides, but there's two die making a set of dice. When you roll the dice, there are six squared or 36 possible outcomes. Some of those outcomes look very similar. You could get a one and a six or a six and a one, which would both sum to seven. Let's take a look at the probability of each outcome. If I roll a pair of dice, there's die one and die two, and I'm mapping out here every possible combination we could have by simply running one through six in one column and then individual numbers in the other. And this adds up to 36 possible combinations. Let's sum those up and compute the probability of each sum occurring in this set of outcomes. Let's take our sums, copy them, and paste them over here as values. Now I'm going to go ahead and sort those from top to bottom, smallest to largest. So you can see there's only one possible way to make a sum of two, and that would be to roll snake eyes. Likewise, there's only one possible way to have a 12, which is by rolling two sixes. I've added a little table to summarize my probabilities. So the probability of rolling a two is going to be equal to one divided by 36, or 2.8%. I've got two threes here, so there must be two ways to come up with that result. That'll be equal to two divided by 36. I'm gonna go ahead and complete this table and check back in a second. Okay, I've completed my table and computed the probability of each possible outcome when rolling the dice. And I will point out that these percentages add up to 100, so we must have done it correctly. I will also point out that seven is the most probable outcome. There were six different ways to come up with seven as a sum when rolling a pair of dice. And if you take six sevens and eights, they account for 44.4%, nearly half of the total number of outcomes. I thought it might be interesting to run a simulation of dice rolls using these fields that I've set up with the random number generator and I sum those here and round them off. These can be any number between one and six and there's two of them. So I'm told by sources on the internet that there are a, typically about 30 turns per player in a game of Monopoly. If we had four players competing against each other, that would be 120 rolls of the dice. So I'm gonna run a 120 trial simulation. So I ran the simulation. I've got in column A here, my 120 trials, and I've got my sums over here in column B. A kind of interesting thing happened. You would expect the mean, the median, and the mode to all be seven or very close to seven, and they are. But the min and the max, rather than being two and 12, which were possibilities, we never got a two or a 12 in 120 rolls. So there's a little variation. Let's uh, take these results and put them next to our probability table here. So I summed and computed all of those actual results. And here they are right next to the statistical probabilities. 
you can see we're a little heavier on the inside here where it was 44.4 percent there it's 47.5 here and we're a little light out here at the tails here's a quick bar chart to show what this looks like in comparison the blue bars represent the statistical probability and the orange bars represent the simulation of with 120 trials and the results of that. If I were to run this simulation with a greater number of trials in the thousands, I'm sure we would see a result that would more closely approximate the statistical probabilities. But this goes to show that in a short monopoly game, there will be an element of luck as to what you roll and where you land. When you start a game of Monopoly, all the players are on the go square and they each take a turn rolling the dice and the game pieces quickly spread out as some players outpace others with their rolls of the dice. But there is one square that is more frequently visited during the game than any other. Do you know which property this is? It turns out this property is jail. You can visit jail by rolling normally. You can be sent to jail with at least one chance card and at least one community chest card. And you can also be sent to jail by hitting the square at the opposite corner. There are more ways to get sent to jail or end up on jail than on any other property on the board. So if a player knows the most frequently visited property and that player also knows the most probable outcome of a roll of the dice, that player can use that knowledge to their advantage. On this worksheet, I've laid out the properties in the order they appear around the game board, starting with jail. If you remember, the highest probability outcome would be a seven. So if you start in jail and you count down to seven, you get to community chest, which is basically surrounded by these orange properties, St. James, Tennessee and New York Avenue. These are the most desirable properties to own and develop in the game of Monopoly. Although they are moderately priced, you're going to get a lot of visitors in these spaces. And if you take this one step further, if they, for example, land on community chest with a seven and you go another seven to 14, give or take a couple, you're going to end up in the red properties. I would rank the red properties as the second most desirable and almost as desirable as the orange properties because they have slightly higher prices and higher development costs and higher rents that you can charge. So those are the big tips of this video. Go after the orange and red properties, but there's another tip for properties you may want to avoid. We know the probability of rolling a seven is the greatest, and there is one property that you will almost never land on by rolling a seven. And I say almost because I'm not exactly sure there may be a chance card or a community chest card that sends you to this property. But by traveling around the board, you will never land on this property by rolling a seven. And that is because the go-to jail is seven spaces in front of this property, and that property would be Park Place. No player will ever initiate their role from the go-to jail space. Therefore, nobody can ever get to Park Place by rolling a seven. This makes Park Place most likely one of the least visited properties on the board and ironically it's one of the most expensive properties it is a member of the blue properties which are the most expensive properties and you would think a lot of people might look at the prices there and want to develop those properties but there's a built-in probability that one of them will get less visitors I hope you've enjoyed this video and would consider becoming a subscriber to my channel. If not, give me a comment. 
If you're watching this video from outside the United States, I'd be very curious to know if the game of Monopoly is sold in your country in some other version or with some variation. After all, it is a game about capitalism and capitalism may not be your system in your country. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.